Glory to Jesus. Most welcome wherever you are. God bless you and God favor you. It's always a pleasure to, to be a blessing to you. It's always a pleasure to come to your life and that we share a spiritual meal together. Um, it's a very defining moment in our lives and we don't take for granted what God is doing in our lives. This week I began a, a new subtopic under our main topic on the release of overflow of abundance. And I want to tell you without doubt that um, there are testimonies coming in. Uh, people are getting to know what I'm talking about and what I'm preaching. Sometimes I know it's not easy to understand what uh, God is saying, but when you follow keenly and you are able to follow the series, um, you are able to see God in this. And therefore, I am so much blessed by your feedback and by what God is doing in your life. Therefore, I want to invite you and welcome you. It's like a lunch hour service to us. And um, you are a blessing. I want to say that you are a blessing. As you comment, as you share, as you bring on board friends and family, as you subscribe on YouTube and like the YouTube channel, TT Eagles, um, it's a blessing. I want to tell you that you are a blessing. I don't take you for granted. God bless you and God favor you. I want us to pray now um, so that we can begin the broadcast. I'm doing a part two of accessing that dimension of the angelic or tapping into the dimension of the angels and we know that um, from Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 that they are ministering spirits sent to minister to heirs of salvation. And I know if you are born again, then you are an heir of salvation. If you are born again, I want you to know that you are an heir of salvation. You are a son and a daughter in the kingdom, then you are an heir of salvation. So I want you to understand what God is doing in this season. This is your time, this is your moment, and your life can never be the same again. I want us to go straight to the book of Acts chapter 27. Acts 27. Um, please share the message. My name is Titi Igos. I'm the lead pastor at Igos Dominion House International. We are here in Nairobi, Kenya. Now, before we read the scriptures, I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment that you've given to us again. We are focused to bring out your word to your people, oh God. I ask you for your backing. I ask your spirit, oh Lord God Almighty, to breathe fire, to breathe your power in this sermon. We bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. God bless you and God favor you. Now, from what I've been speaking about is accessing the dimension of the angels. And I began by showing you the ministry of angels to the heirs of salvation. Let me know where you're watching us from. Um, it's a blessing to come to you. It's also a blessing as you watch us and uh, uh, you're commenting and you're liking and you're giving us, um, you're blessing us. You're a blessing to us and thank you so much. Therefore, I began by showing unto us the importance of the angels of God. Remember on the other kingdom, there are demons. But there are also angels. But I want you to understand that in the kingdom of God, we have angels. And from the book of Hebrews chapter 1, we understand that they have a ministry in your life. You as an heir of salvation, the angels of God, they are like your fellow servants. I tell you, they're not like, they are your fellow servants. The angels are your fellow servants. They also bear the testimony of our Lord Jesus, the way you bear it. 
And Bible says in verse 14 of Hebrews 1, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? So their work is to minister to you. The angels have an assignment in your life. Whether you see them or you don't see them, you know what is needed in the kingdom is faith. Sometimes it's not the seeing. The seeing is good. Seeing them is very important. It's also important, it's good. But the faith in God that his word is yeah and amen. That if the angels are ministering spirits, when you begin to pray, for example, let me give you an example. If you need money, how do you pray? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I commission angels right now. I commission the angels of God. That's how to pray. And it's, if you pray that prayer by faith, oh, come on. Whether you see them with your eyes or you don't see them, there will be a manifestation of their ministry in your life. There will be a manifestation of their ministry in your life. And I want you to be concerned with seeing their ministry in your life. Yesterday I showed you how Jacob for 20 years in the hands of his uncle, uncle, uncle Laban, this man changes his wages 10 times. This man was a wicked man. He was, he was a witch. He was a diviner. And he became rich because of Jacob. But one night, the angel of the Lord appears to Jacob in a dream and shows him what to do. And it is by those, that those angels that appear to Abraham, I mean to Jacob, that plugged him into the overflow of abundance. So, as we speak about the release of overflow of abundance, I am here to show you that as a child of God, as a son and as a daughter, there are rights you need to know. There are truths that you need to know. There are rights as a son in the kingdom that you need to know. For example, The policemen, they are entitled by the state to keep law and order, to protect you, to protect your property. Yes. To protect your property, to protect your house, whatever it is. That is your entitlement. We know there will be corruption with men, but there is no corruption with God. So we are given angels to be ministering spirits. The way we have the KDF, the Kenya Defense Forces, or any defense forces of any nation, that they will be on the borders, securing that nation, providing security. You will be asleep and the police will be out there doing patrols with their cars. Others are walking and they are carrying guns. They are protecting while you are asleep. That's how angels are. They are ministering spirits. They are sent forth to minister to you. So actually you can pray, Father, I commission angels. I commission the angels of God. 
I commissioned the angels God to do one, two, three, four. Yes, I want to show you something. Hmm. So I began with yesterday talking about Jacob. How he enjoyed the ministry of angels. How Jacob enjoyed the ministry of angels for 20 years. He would have gone back home empty handed. There was no way out for him. But you know when he tapped to the dimension of the angelic. His life turned around. These are benefits in the kingdom. What you know is very important. The truth you have is very important. Remember, my people perish for lack of knowledge. What you need is in the hands of God. What you need is in the hands of God. If an anchor is not willing to allow a son be blessed, what about you? It is when Jacob tapped into the ministry of angels that the man came out wealthier more than his uncle. A samba boy is now more wealthier than the man is, has tapped. There is a release of overflow of abundance in his life after he tapped into the ministry of angels. Come on. Somebody might hear me speaking about the ministry of angels and think that, so where is Jesus? Where is God? Where is the Holy Spirit? What is their work? Hmm. Hmm. I already told you. Let me give an example. Let me give an example of our country, Kenya. You don't expect our current president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, to carry guns out there. But there are men of the cloth answerable to him. Did you hear what I said? Oh, come on. Come on. If there will be an attack on any building, or any forest, or any city in Kenya, the response is not that the president will come with guns. No, but he has a team that responds quickly on behalf of the president. Oh, come on. Come on. The Holy Ghost is a king. He has servants. The way I have come to preach to you, God has not sat here to preach to you. He sent me. I have come on his behalf to come and minister to you. I am here on behalf of God. I am a servant of the most high God. And I do his will. I do what he says. Did you hear what I said? So the angels of God are like the servants that are sent to minister to who? To the children. We are kings and we are priests. They are sent to minister to you. Mm. Listen to me carefully. In the book of, because of time, Acts 27. Acts 27. Thank you for everyone joining us. God bless you. And God favor you. Acts 27 and verse 22. Now, I need you to understand something. That Paul is en route to Rome. With other prisoners, he is going to be tried there. He is going to face the law in Rome. Uh, so they get into a ship, and the journey was very long. The journey was long in the sea. And at some point, there was a tempest. Yes, there was a tempest. The sea became boisterous. Listen to me carefully. The sea became boisterous. And it was not easy. Everyone was troubled. They thought they were going to die. Mm -hmm. And verse 22 says, 
And now I urge you to take art. This is Paul. For there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the sheep. Hi. The problem is not yet begun. But even before it begins, Paul has information. Watch this. 23. For they are stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve saying do not be afraid Paul you must be brought before Caesar and indeed God has granted you and all those who sail with you yes therefore take heart men for I believe God that it will be just as it was it was told me however we must run aground on a certain island Paul stands and he, he wants to encourage them because of the situation around <laughs> and Paul says there stood beside me an angel of the Lord now I want you to watch this this is the same Paul that the Lord speaks to the same Paul that the Holy Ghost speaks to the same Paul oh yando oh thank you Jesus Pastor Fred give me that scripture that says he will give you his angels to keep charge over you I think it's Psalm 91 which verse listen to me the angels of God have an assignment a man of God, an ambassador of that kingdom of God, is en route to Rome. And on the way, it's tough for Paul and his team. And because the angels of God have an assignment, <laughs> they have an assignment to the heirs of salvation. And Paul is among them, he's an heir of salvation, he's a son, he's a son in the kingdom. Is a servant of the Most High God. I'm waiting for you here. The angel of the Lord appears to Paul and gives him a comforting message and says, Don't worry, nobody will die. Only the sheep will be broken. Only the sheep, they will lose only sheep, the sheep, not in life. Not and life will be lost. Now watch this. Psalm 91 verse 11. Glory to Jesus. Are you there? Psalm 91. Yes, I'm there. 91 verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. It says, For he shall give his angels charge over you. Hmm. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. I will give you angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. So when Paul is in danger. Angels are assigned to him. An angel stands before him at night and speaks to him. And in the morning, when they wake up, he tells them what the Lord says. Say, an angel of the Lord appeared to me. Don't be afraid. Nothing will happen. Because God gives us angels to keep charge. Now, people die in accidents. Come on. When we have angels given to keep charge of us. You know, the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. It is lack of knowledge that makes men to perish. It is when you don't know what is given to you, what is at your disposal, that you fail. Paul is a man 
that accesses dimensions. One time he says, I don't know whether I was in this body or another body, but I found myself in the third heavens. Now this is a man that has known how to access dimensions. And in this season, he accesses the angelic dimension. And the angel, let me tell you, the angelic dimension is not wished. These dimensions of God are not wished. You access them. You don't wish. I wish I, I wish there was an angel. I wish I could see angels. You access those dimensions. Yes. Receive the favor of access to be able to access the dimension of the angelic. Rabo Shatazialaba. So Paul has accessed the dimension. Watch this. I want to show you something. Paul has spoken something before it happens. Say, there will be this. This will happen. This by who? By an angel. Not by the Holy Ghost. So there are moments when the Holy Ghost will speak. And there are even moments when the angel will speak. The angel can come in a dream. The angel can come life. This generation, you need to understand these things. My brothers and my sisters, you need to understand this thing. That you can be walking. Oh, one man of God, he gives a testimony. He says he was walking um, in a certain street. And some guys came and they wanted to attack him. And all of a sudden there appeared a, a masculine guy. And when these guys that wanted to rob this guy, the man of God saw him, they ran away. And when they ran away, he looked. That masculine guy looked at the man of God and said, when you need my help, call me in time. Ah. When you need my help, is when he realized it was an angel. A woman says she was driving in a lonely road. And she had a puncture. And she needed help. And a young man comes driving a car. Hear me. Hear me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody was on that road. A young man came smiling, driving another car. Parks out. Parks. Uh-huh. And then picks a tire, comes and changes for this old woman, and smiles back at her, says, God bless you. And the young man drives away, and her eyes opened. It was an angel. The angelic dimension, it's a reality. I say the angelic dimension is a reality. Paul says, by night, an angel of the Lord came and stood beside me and told me what's going to happen. That, be encouraged. No one is going to die. The only thing we're going to lose is a sheep. But we must, come on, I, I want to say something. <laughs> mm. Verse 26 says, that is Acts 27, 26. However, we must run aground on a certain island. The angel of the Lord has given directions to Paul. Why? Mm. Because they are about to plug in Paul into another dimension. The dimension of overflow, of abundance. Watch this. The tempest came. The ship was broken into pieces. Some landed off on shore, sitting on some pieces. Others were swimming. And they saw the island was Malta. And on arrival, I want to preach to somebody today. Can I preach? Can I speak to your life? When they were 
in that island called Malta. I want to show you a dimension has opened for Paul. And everyone now, he's enjoying the grace upon the men of God. Everyone is enjoying the dimension that Paul has accessed. Why? Because when they landed in Malta, the Bible says it was called, now chapter 28 of Acts. And when they had escaped, because it was by the angels of God that they escaped. It was by tapping into the angelic dimension that they escaped from the boisterous sea. From the tempest. Mm. 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 You need to understand this dimension of the angelic. You need to tap into it. You need to access it. Yes, there's a lot you need to know. There's a lot you need to access for you to see the hand of God in your life. Listen to me carefully. When they had accept, escaped, they found how the island was called Malta. Now, I want to show you something. The people of the island, Bible says they showed them unusual kindness. They showed them unusual kindness. Ah. Ah. The people of the island showed Paul and his team unusual kindness. Remember Paul saying, we must, verse 26 of 27, chapter 27, however, we must run aground on a certain island. The angel tells him, there's an island you need to, to run on ground. Marco Sata. The angel has prepared an overflow of abundance for Paul. And the first thing they experience is unusual kindness. Unusual kindness is in the dimension of overflow of abundance. Mm. There is kindness and there is unusual kindness. Am I talking to somebody here? Verse 2 says, Acts 28 verse 2, and the natives showed us unusual, I'm using King James, unusual kindness. Look at this. That already Paul and his steam, <laughs> they are already flowing in the overflow of abundance. But he talks of an angel. Oh, it is the angel of God that made them escape death in the sea. Why? Psalm 91 11. Uh, he will send his angels to keep charge over you. It is the work of the angels to protect you. Did you know that? Yes. Ah. Ah. Commission the angels of God when there's danger. Commission them. There are times when I will be like this and say, Angel Michael, I need your help. <laughs> uh, I will not speak much on that. You will think I worship angels. Unusual kindness. Unusual kindness. That's another dimension of kindness. Which dimension? Overflow of abundance. The natives of the land showed them unusual kindness. Watch this. What they do? They kindled the fire for them. Why? It was very cold. It was raining. It was a time like now. I don't know. <laughs> Is it raining in your place? I don't know. It was cold. But they were shown unusual kindness. I'm declaring to somebody right now. By the help of angels of God, yes, yes, may they plug you in into a dimension of unusual kindness. I don't know what you're going through, I don't know what is happening. May God raise men and women that will show you and use your kindness. Come on. 
I feel like standing here. May God send men and women your way that will show you and use your kindness. These are strangers landed on an island and the natives, the people of the island are there to show them and use your kindness. I am declaring to you right now, it doesn't matter the kind of situation that you are in. I don't know the kind of situation you are in. Let it be and use your kindness. Unusual, what you need is unusual kindness from God through the angels, through the ministry of angels. They are sent. The angel tells Paul, mm -hmm, Nobody's going to die, but the ship is going, you're going to lose the ship, but you need to. There's an island that you need to land. Because in that place, Kato Saraba, the angels of God had gone and they had prepared, they are ministering angels. By the time Paul arrives, the angels of God are at work. Ah, and when they landed out of a mysterious sea, out of a situation that was not good, everyone feared for his life because they, were, they almost died. But you know what? The angels were there to keep them alive. Nothing dies in your hands. I say it again. Nothing dies in your hands. Everyone thought that Paul and his team, they, they thought they were going to die. But the angel comes and says, no one is going to die. <laughs> I cancel death. I said, I cancel death. I cancel death. Listen to me carefully. <laughs> now, they lit a fire. And you know, as usual, when you lit a fire, you need to maintain that fire. Yeah. So they began to collect some firewood. And Paul was among them collecting firewood. Now, watch this. Verse 3. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, and lay them on the fire. A viper came. Because of the heat. It came out of the fire because of the heat. And fastened on his hand. Now watch this. Paul was not the only person. Come on. Paul was not the only person gathering firewood. Paul was not the only person around the fire. But the viper came out uh, because of it and fastened on the hand of Paul. Now at this time I want to declare something. Any attack of the enemy targeting you it will not prevail. The enemy knows the target well. <laughs> the enemy knows his target. The enemy knows his target. And the target of the enemy is one Paul. Apostle Paul. Not anybody else. Any arrow projected against your business. Any arrow projected against your marriage. Any arrow projected against your health. Any demonic arrow projected against your finances. Against your ministry. Against your assignment in Christ. I declare it null and void. It's not prevailing. Any demonic force exerted on you. I declare it null and void. I declare every demonic force exerted on your life, on your children, on your husband, on your wife. I declare it null and void. I declare it null and void in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Paul, when the serpent, 
when the viper fastened on his hand verse 4 says so when the natives saw when the islanders saw the creature hanging from his hand they say to one another no doubt this man is a murderer whom thou he has escaped the sea yet justice does not allow him to live <laughs> so what happened but he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm verse 6 however they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall dead but after they had looked for a long time and saw no harm come to him they changed their minds and said that he was a god now the snake has beaten him the guys around the natives the people of the island they looked at the person mm, this one must be a murderer he escaped the sea now here on the ground think justice is not allowing him to live but Paul did something Bible says that Paul shook off the viper into the fire I come with a word for somebody you know Paul did not panic uh, Paul did not panic why are you panicking Oh, they said they are going to close down my shop. Why are you panicking? You are not alone. Ah. I said, you are not on your own. Don't permit the demon of panic attack you. Bible says that Paul shook off the snake into the fire. Paul did not scream. Paul did not say, Mama, eh, which, which, which country are you from? Eh? I have my friend that say, Mama, yo, Ma, yo. I don't know how you say it in your place. <laughs> Paul said nothing. Paul shook off the snake into the fire. Don't panic. Don't, don't panic. I came to tell you, don't panic. When you look around, things look very negative. It looks like the enemy is celebrating already of victory against you but I came to tell you don't panic I said don't you panic a dimension is opening in your life the angelic dimension and when that dimension has opened no harm can find you oh, oh. no harm can come in your life no harm can find its way in your life. No harm can be smuggled into your business, into your marriage. No. No, 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 no. No. Bible says that Paul shook off the creature into the fire. You know what? It burnt. That snake burnt in the fire. Now. I'm releasing the fire of God that burns the forces of darkness. Bible says that God is a consuming fire. My time, my time, I don't know. I'm not yet done. But listen to me. God is a consuming fire. There is a part of God that consumes. And I release that fire that consumes every wickedness sent against you. That consumes the arrows of the enemy sent against your life. Let that fire consume any arrow of the devil sent against your life. Let the fire of God consume let the consuming fire i release the consuming fire the consuming fire to consume the enemies yes the consuming fire the consuming fire Rabba Shatter. Now look, watch this. They waited for paul to swell up huh? to swell or to fall dead they waited they were expecting 
what is the expectation of your enemies now the bible says the expectation of the righteous shall never be cut off the bible does not say the expectation of your enemies shall not be cut off they were so expectant that this one is a viper mm, ah, nothing will save him not even the best medical doctor in malta a national hospital eh, they were in malta an island called malta they gave up on for on paul ah. can you imagine they are not doing fast hit to paul they gave up on paul they said allow he's going to die this one he's going to swell fall dead now there are people that have given up on you yeah yes they have given up on you and the Lord says I'm coming through for you ah. there are people you expected them to be of help to you ah. listen to me there are angels that God has sent this season to minister to you. Remove your eyes on men and look unto Jesus that commands his angels to minister to us. There are people that have given up. Yes, they have said they are waiting for your marriage to die. They are waiting for your ministry to die. Can I talk to somebody? Hey. They are saying, we are waiting for him to die. Death is not prevailing. Death is not your portion. The Bible says that he who sits in heaven loves. He who sits in heaven loves. When they are planning... He loves. He loves. They were expecting him to die or to swell. None of those happened. Now listen to me. What they've been praying against you, it will not work. What they've been saying against you, it will not work. What they've been expecting the evil they've been expecting to happen against you is not happening i have bad news for your enemies i have bad news to your enemies i have bad news to them that are expecting you to fail you are not failing <laughs> I have bad news to some that are against you. You are not going to fail. You are in a new dimension. The angels of God are working for you. The angels of God have been commissioned in the name of Jesus. Let there be angels of God. Let there be angels to minister to you. They were expecting. They were expecting something. I don't know what they're expecting to happen to you. I don't know. Look at me. Look at me. I don't know what they are expecting that should happen to you. What they are expecting has that expectation of doom. I declare it null and void. The dimension you are in. What they have, they, they know what they have done and they're expecting. Uh, they are expecting your child to die. They are expecting the ministry to die. They are expecting that finances uh, will not come your way. They are expecting that you will close down that business. They are expecting you are closing down that company. You are going to close down that industry. 
they are expecting that you're going to fail. Listen to me. Their expectation is being cut off right now. Ah. Ah. In the name of Jesus, let the angels of God begin to minister to you. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to heirs of salvation? When, when for a long time they saw that nothing happened of the two, he didn't swell, he didn't fall dead, they changed their mind. The dimension you are in of overflow of abundance, I assure you, it's a matter of time. They give Paul time. And after some time, not of course not a long time. <laughs> after some time, they change their mind. Wait for them. Somebody tell your neighbor, wait for them. They are going to change their minds about you. I, I'm saying they are going to change their minds about you. What they expected to happen is not going to happen. What they thought is going to happen against you is not going to happen. They will change their minds. You know what they said? The natives, they said, this man is a god. Ah, a viper. Mm. Ah, you know what has happened to you? They know very well that you can't survive. <laughs> what has happened? They know that that church cannot survive. Yaredo <laughs> Shata. I am confident in what I'm talking about. Ah. I am not trying to beat about the bush. I not only came to encourage you, I also came to tell you of a firm promise of God. What I'm speaking right now is coming to pass in your life. Ah. What, what has happened, they know very well you cannot make it. But I'm here to tell you, you are making it. You're coming out victorious. Victory belongs to you. God is fighting the battle for you. Victory is yours. Oh. No harm is coming upon you. Nothing will happen, believe me. Trust this word. Trust the God that sent me. I came with a word for you. What they expected to happen is not going to happen. In any case, they're going to change their minds about you. They changed their mind. They said, mm, this man, ah, he's a God, though. He's a God. Because he didn't fall dead. They were ex expecting him to fall. He didn't, he didn't die. To swell, he didn't swell. Ah, ah. What kind of a man is this? Some will say, you are using uh, juju. Uh, you have gone to see a sankoma, that's why uh, a witch, you have gone to see a diviner, that's why things are working good on your side. No, it is God. And the glory be to God. Now watch this. When they change their mind, I want to show you, I'm about to say something. <laughs> In that region, verse 7, there was an estate of the leading citizen of the island whose name was Publius. So Publius was like the governor of the island. He was the leading citizen, the governor of the island. I want to speak to somebody. The governor of the island had a sick father. And the father has dysentery and has fever. And they bring the sick father to Paul. And Paul cast out the demon out of him. Prays for him. And he's healed. Ah. And when they saw that Paul, by the grace of God, has healed this man, they brought everyone that was sick in the island. It's a dimension of overflow of abundance. The man is walking in a dimension of healing. What dimension? 
you know there can be spontaneous healings. Healing there, healing there, healing today, healing next month. Mm -mm. The kind of healing that manifested that season in the ministry of Paul is overflow of abundance. The healing was in overflow of abundance. Why? They brought everyone that was sick in the island and they were all healed minus no one. Overflow of abundance. Someone's ministry is breaking forth into an overflow of abundance. There is a gift that is opening up into overflow of, of abundance. Listen, I want to listen. The Lord is telling me to release number one. Number one, the one, the one thing that God is releasing right now is the gift of healing. You will lay hands on the sick to be healed. Listen to me carefully. You will walk in the healing overflow. You will walk in the healing grace. I declare, I activate the healing grace in your life. I say, I activate. Somebody say, I receive. I activate. Mm. I activate the gift of healing in you. You will lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. I'm here to activate it. Sheriarosata. Receive it. It's your portion. I activate. I activate the ministry of healing. Some of you, you begin to heal like they'll, they'll, they'll be shocked. What, what happened to you? Healings will begin to take place. Go back to those you prayed for and they are still sick and lay hands on them, I say, in the name of Jesus. I say, go back and lay hands on them again. In some, in th you will not even lay hands on them. You will say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. And they will stand up and walk. Immediately God did that. Something happened. A connection opened. It's called overflow of abundance. God connects Paul with the governor of the island, the leading citizen. Not a small guy. Like the governor of the island. I want to speak. The, in this season of overflow, you are going to experience connections. Heavy connections. I, I bet you need a connection. Do you need a connection? I'm asking, do you need a connection? I'm declaring to you right now. Ah, receive divine connections. Now watch this. Paul received one Paul just needed only one connection. There is one connection you need. And it's coming to you right now. Don't forget the angelic dimension. All this they were taught. Yes, Paul was taught by the angel of the Lord. So the angels of God are at work. They are bringing connections. May, may the angels of God be, mm, bring you connections. You, you are joking with angels. You don't know who angels are. You have no idea what the angels of God can do. I say you have no idea. An angel of the Lord. Ah. Ah. Have you known that the story of the woman of God? One of our own here. Evangelist Teresia Wairimo. When she was coming up in ministry. And it was not easy. And bills were there to be paid. And she didn't have money. That the Lord spoke to her and said, Go to a certain building. This office number so and so. Go. There is your check there. <laughs> and when she goes to the secretary, the secretary says, Yes, the boss has been waiting for you. And the boss is not aware that this woman of God is coming. Come on. And when she enters to see the boss in that office, the boss pulls out an, an envelope. Hey! <laughs> and over to the woman of God. And one day, the boss tells the woman of God, I'm tired of these, you are eh, Arabs, coming to my office every time. She came to realize it was the angels of God that were bringing money. 
Makatosha hande. May angels of God bring money to you. Ah. I say, may angels of God bring money to you. I say, may angels of God. There will be testimonies of my debt was cleared and I don't know who paid for me. Yes, 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 yes. That debt, I release the grace of debt cancellation in your life now. I know they have told you before that money cannot come out of blues. I'm here to tell you there's a dimension you access. My name is Titi Egos and I'm not a lunatic. I have got some small schooling. I've gone to school. So when I'm saying these things, I know what I'm saying. Oh. Before God called me into full-time ministry, I was working. Yes. And I was making good money. I have gone to school. I was making some little coins. So I am not, eh? I am not impaired here. I am telling you, angels can bring money to you. Which is that bird that brought meat and bread to Elijah? Where were they picking it from? Wait. Wait. The Bible says that the children of Israel ate the food of angels. Their work was to wake up, go and collect manna. Manna is food for angels. Hey! Hey! Let angels minister to you. There is a connection you need. I declare that by the ministry of open your heart and receive this word. I declare into your life that by the ministry of angels, connections, heavy connections, what you need is coming your way. Ah, ah, go. The angels of God will bring people your way, push them. Ah, <laughs> ah, they got a connection with the governor of the island. May God bring to you, it's, it's a season of overflow, of abundance. And part of that, eh, eh, part of that, his connections that are heavy, not small. Overflow of abundance. Are you, are you hearing me? Not just simple connections. Connections at the dimension, at the level of overflow, of abundance. The Bible says that this man took Paul and his team in to his house. Cared for them for three days. Mm. Mm. <laughs> ha. He entertained Paul and his people for three days. Verse 8. Yana Soto Rabahana. I'm about to say something. Now, when the three days were over, these guys were many, by the way. I'm not seeing the verse where they're saying the number, but it's over, it's over 100. Entertaining them breakfast, lunch, supper, breakfast, lunch, supper. Three days, breakfast, lunch, supper. Entertain them. Hi. Hey. Hey, ya. Uh. Hey, ya. Uh. Bible says, verse 10. They also honored us in many ways. 
<laughs> in this overflow of abundance, honor is part of the package. God is going to cause people to honor you. God is causing men to honor you. In a special way, not in small ways. God is causing men to honor you. You will be honored. Receive it, somebody. Receive honor. Receive honor. May you be honored. May you be honored. May you be honored. In the name of Jesus. May you be honored. And when, when we departed, they provided such things as were necessary. What do you need? What do you need? Because I'm commissioning the angels of God right now to supply. What do you need from God? The angels of God are there at your disposal. What do you need? Mention it now in your heart. As I'm about to finish, mention it in your heart. That Father, I need this. Daddy, I need this. Master Jesus, I need this. My bless, I need this. Because right now, as I'm speaking right now, I'm commissioning the angels of God to supply. The angels of God are bringing everything you need to your hands. They are dropping everything you need to you. Let there be endless supply. And overflow of abundance of a kind of supply in your life. I commission the angels of God to supply what you need. I'm hearing the word kidney. Somebody will watch this thing later. And you need, there's a problem of your kidney. Healing is coming your way right now. Be healed of that kidney problem. In the name of Jesus, healing is your portion. Be healed. Woo. Woo. What you need is supplied. Shout hallelujah. It is done for you. Now watch this. You remember when they were coming? When they were arriving in Malta, the ship, they lost their ship. Ah, they lost the ship, so it was not in good condition. But we know they left. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling to prophesy to somebody about a car. Yeah. You know, I rarely do this. Yeah. But I'm, I'm hearing this. The Lord spoke to me. Yeah. I am not talking of a person that had plans to buy a car this month. No. If you have money to buy a car, go and buy a car. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> if you have money in the bank, huh? don't be saying amen here. Withdraw it, go and buy a car. I'm talking of somebody that the level that God has brought you, God has seen that you need a car. In supernatural ways. Did you hear what I said? I'm very specific. That you need a car. Yeah. The level you are in right now, the level that God has brought you now, you need a car. It, 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 it's not only for preachers. It can happen for a business person who needs a car but doesn't have money, doesn't know how to do, go about it. But I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, may God give you that car that you need. There is a car for somebody. I know what I'm saying. There is a father, give me my car. If if nobody is receiving it, I also need a car. <laughs> I declare in the name of Jesus what you need. Receive it. May there be a supply in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. And I'm praying for you. My name once again is Titi Egos. I am the lead pastor. Here he goes, Dominion House International. We are located here in Nairobi, CBD, Nairobi, Kenya. Sunbeam Shopping Complex, 
Fifth floor is where we are. Along Fangano Street. We are right opposite um, Nat headquarters that houses Equity Bank. When you come there along Fangano Street, you'll find us there. Please come. Call that number on your screen, whether of your phone or whatever it is. You'll be able to find us. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. Amen.